the seven distinguished inductees and the team of distinction that we're going to honor today certainly uphold those high standards of excellence that have long distinguished EKU and have always represented the, these teams, their respective teams and their institution with class and dignity, whether a team or as an individual. They're a big part of our history, as you know, and the lore of our beloved university. And they continue to make us all proud to be colonels. Before we start our program today, we have a few groups and individuals that we would like to recognize. First, members of our Board of Regents who have supported our program so wonderfully. So please hold your applause until we have introduced them all. Vice Chairman Alan Long is with us today. Board member Jason Marion. Board member, um, our student region is here. Camden Ritchie as well. Board member Vasu Vasuvadin is here. And of course, President McFadden as well, who we'll hear from in just a moment. In his fourth year as EKU Vice President and Athletics Director, Matt Roan and his wife, Mallory, are here as well. Matt will speak at the end of our program. Several members of our Athletics Hall of Fame have returned today to honor this year's class. At this time, if we could, we'll ask all current Hall of Famers to please stand so we may once again recognize you for your contribution to EKU Athletics and the University. <clears throat> Welcome back, glad to have you, and we're going to add a few more members here today. To begin our program, we are going to hear remarks from EKU's fourth, 14th president, Dr. McFadden, is only the third EKU alum and the first from our service region to serve as president. He holds both undergraduate and doctorate degrees from EKU, a master's degree as well from the Gatton College of Business and Economics at the University of Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest supporter for EKU Athletics, EKU President Dr. David T. McFadden. Thank you, Greg. I accuse Greg of perhaps wearing a red tie this morning, so uh, I'll, I'll forgive him uh, as we move forward. It is a blessing to be with you uh, this morning. I had a chance last night to uh, spend the evening uh, with our uh, team of distinction that's going to be recognized tonight. I will tell you this about that team. An amazing group of men. It was great to spend time with their families, but I will tell you that over the years, the stories have grown. So it is, it is good, Coach Strong, to be with you. It is good to be with all of you today, and I'm thankful to be here to recognize some of the most outstanding individuals who have contributed to this institution. We truly stand on the shoulder of giants, and we are grateful to be with you today. It is a special occasion that we get to recognize so many, and I'm so thankful that Greg had those who have already been inducted stand and be recognized because at EKU, we strive for excellence every day. We do expect to win because we prepare to win, and as we look back, we have won, and we will continue to win as we move forward. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize that uh, one of the individuals who was in the first uh, classes of Hall of Fame of East, at Eastern Kentucky University, Coach Roy Kidd, has passed. And I know we have talked about Coach Kidd, but I would ask you to continue to remember the Kidd family uh, in your memory and recognize that those today will be joining him uh, in the Distinguished Hall of Fame at Eastern Kentucky University. Today, uh, we get to recognize for the 18th time an, a class into the Hall of Fame. We began this tradition in 2005, and a total of 167 former athletes, coaches, administrators, and five teams of distinction have been added to the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. I want to thank the selection committee. I know, Carl, that it is a hard process as we look at those who have contributed so much to the university to put a class together. Today's class, with a total of seven individual inductees and one team of di distinction, spans five decades from the 1970s to the 20 teens. Each of our newest inductees make Eastern Kentucky University proud, and I want you to know that you represent what is best about Eastern Kentucky University. Today's inductees represent eight different sports, including volleyball, men's basketball, women's basketball, softball, football, men's golf, women's track, and women's cross country. This year's class represents six athletes who received all conference recognition and two who were chosen for all American teams. This year's team of distinction, the 1971-1972 men's basketball team, has taken our institution further in the championship competition than any team in university history. 
We are very excited about this year's team, Coach Hamilton. And I know we got some players here with us today. And while we are so proud of that 71-72 team, this team for 23-24 is going to be coming for that record. So we are looking forward to that. Each of you is well deserving, and we are so proud of the recognition that's going to be that's going to be bestowed upon you today. And I want to thank you for continuing to support Eastern Kentucky University, supporting our programs. We have 18 amazing programs at Eastern Kentucky University, 12 head coaches, an amazing administrative ta staff. And if you stay here today for what's going to be a great day for EKU football, you will see the commitment of this entire campus to lift up Eastern Kentucky University through how we compete and how we win. I'm excited for what is ahead because I truly believe that Eastern Kentucky University's best days are ahead of us, and it is because of everyone in this room. I look around this room and I see faces who have been here for a long, long time. I see faces who have just arrived, but the desire to make this place the very best that it can be is the commitment that we all share. Thank you all for being with us today, and congratulations to our inductees for the Hall of Fame this year. Thank you, President McFadden. Now, let's meet the inductees. He played four seasons for the EKU basketball team. He averaged the team best 19.7 points and led the conference in rebounding with 11 a game as a freshman in 1977. He was named first team all OVC. He scored less than 10 points just once that freshman year and scored 23 points, hauled in 13 rebounds in his first collegiate game against 20th ranked UNC Charlotte. He played against All-American and future Boston Celtics star Cedric Cornbell, Cornbread Maxwell in that game. He finished his first year as the fourth highest scoring freshman in the country, topping such players as Louisville's Daryl Griffith and Indiana's Mike Woodson. As a sophomore, he averaged 10.3 points and six rebounds. And while battling through injuries as a junior in 1979, he was part of that team that made the NCAA tournament after the thrilling win in the OVC championship against Western Kentucky. He added 8.8 .8 points and seven rebounds his final year. And for his career, he finished as the 29th all-time scorer with 1,130 points, <clears throat> excuse me, and the 11th all-time rebounder. He had 728 boards. He postponed his business career for one year to play professional basketball in Luxembourg, averaging 30 points and 15 rebounds. He has worked for two major oil companies in the past 35 years, 25 for Shell Oil and the last 10 years for Chevron, where his job title is Lead Business Development Specialist. Joined today by family, friends, teammates, and former coaches, let's welcome number 35, Dave Butchek. say all those nice things when I play. That's very nice, Greg. Um, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all my fellow inductees, thanks for, for coming today. It means a lot to me personally. I know it means a lot to them. When you sign a letter of intent to become a student athlete, you dream about a day like today. You dream about a day where you're going to be notified when your playing career is over that you're going to be inducted into your school's Hall of Fame. I really don't know if there's anything really greater than that. Um, I'm humbled and I'm, and I'm so very grateful. The gratefulness starts with all my Eastern family. Carl, Carl's career and my career overlapped. He was the SID when I was in school. He saw every game that I played. Uh, President McFadden, your emphasis on sports and your leadership. Matt Roan. Dan McBride, who has impacted students for the last 30 years. I met him when he was, I think, eight years old. He used to help me wash my car at Maddox Hall. Um, President America, Meredith Whitlock is not here. He was a great mentor to me. And Dr. Bonnie Gray, who has a very special place in my family's heart. I'll get, that, get to that in a minute. She couldn't make it, but I had to, to mention her. And Coach Hamilton as well, he brought you know, 
some, some of the guys from the team, I, I appreciate him too. So those people, those leaders I just mentioned have spent their entire careers impacting students and student athletes. I think we need to give them a round of applause, please. Okay. Um, my family, my mom and dad are watching on YouTube TV in heaven today. Um, I know that because I think my father has finally stopped yelling at the officials in time to tune in. Um, <laughs> They taught me the value of hard work and respect, and I love them for that. They would be so proud to be here today, and I know that they're, they're, they're smiling brightly. Um, table 11, my family, my daughters, Emily, my son-in-law, Greg, Sarah, uh, Gary and Ann Booten, their alumni, my friends from work here, Bill, Mary, and Blake, and Tom and Jameson, my godson, Kyle, are here, more EKU alumni. Thanks so much for being here. But it's really about my wife, Jan. Jan and I met in Dr. Gray's class uh, when we were in school together. We'd be married 40 years next spring. Um, she's made me the person that I am. I love her more than anything and thank her so much for all she's done to like support me as, as long as we've been together. So thank you, honey. I love you. Um, my journey began when I was seven. I had the measles and it was a cold Indiana winter and my mom and dad wanted to do something for me so they bought me a basketball. So I went down in the basement with my calamine lotion and I dribbled and I dribbled and I dribbled. The dribbling graduated into games of two on two and three on three on a goal that was on the back of the garage in the alley with other young, young guys. And we came in when it was time for dinner, when moms called, we just loved the competition. It was reminiscent of the movie Hoosiers. Young guys playing basketball, just, just loving it. My high school was big and we were a powerhouse. Blessed with Indiana high school coach and all-state teammates, we were groomed to play at the next level. That's D1, Bill. The ironic thing is that I was never really heavily recruited to come to school here. But once I visited campus, I knew that this was the place for me and the love affair with this university began, which is even stronger today. Coach Byer, Coach Good, and Coach Washington, they were old school tough. They were tough, but they were fair. Coach Bear Bryant had a famous line that said, coach them hard and love them later. Well, Ed and Max, they basically lived by that. But through all that tough love, I was taught a very valuable lesson, a lesson that has taken me through my entire life. You see, everybody aspires to be good. You don't want to be on a team to be bad. You want to be good. But what separates the good from the great and the great from the elite are four behaviors that you must have. You must be coachable, you must be accountable, you must be a leader, and you must have a work ethic. Just like life, right? So it took some time, we educate, we executed the coach's plan, we won championships, we played in the NCAA tournament when only 44 teams were, were invited, and that's thanks to amazing players like Oliver, Tierney, Haney, Elliott, Jones, and Tillman. And oh yeah, by the way, we did just fine against that other team from Bowling Green. Okay? All right? In closing, I arrived here as a skinny 17-year-old kid, deer in the headlights that just wanted an opportunity to play and wanted to compete. After a few of the first organized workouts, I was told that I was too slow, I couldn't shoot, I couldn't rebound, and I couldn't guard anybody. But other than that, I guess I was a damn good player. Okay? And I went back to Maddox Hall, room 105 that day, and I made the promise to myself that my legacy here was not going to be defined by that. So my journey is now over, and that promise I made to myself has now been kept, as I'm, not, as now, I'm, now, I'm now the newest member of the EK, EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. Thank you. Hey, Dave, I never asked you this, but when you were at Michigan City, what, what was the team's nickname? The Red Devils. The, and what was the, how far did you go in the state tournament? Uh, we got to the final eight my junior year, and we lost in the first round my okay. team. Just wanted to know, as a 1972 graduate, I was a sophomore of Connersville High School who won the state championship in Indiana. <laughs> Every time I see you, you mention Connorsville. Beat, beat Jeffersonville and get. And, people here have to Google where in the hell Connorsville is. You got it. 
and beat and beat uh, Gary West in the championship team up your way. So we love it. We could talk Indiana basketball on the high school level a lot. You're welcome. By the way, he has a great story about Tiger Woods, if you want a good 30-minute story from Dave. So, yeah. <laughs> Our next inductee was connected with EKU Athletics for nearly 30 years, both as a player and a coach for the volleyball team. She was a four-time Ohio Valley Conference selection from 1980 to 1983, an all-OVC tournament honoree in 83, and an all-AIAW choice in 1980 as an outside hitter playing for EKU's legendary Hall of Fame coach, Jerry Polvino. She was chosen EKU's Female Athlete of the Year in 1984 and won team awards for Best All-Around Player and Best Defensive Player following her senior year. She still sits third among all EKU volleyball athletes with a 271 career hitting percentage. Following an ACL knee injury her senior year, she had played two matches too many to get redshirted and her playing career ended. She began her coaching career at Penn State McKeesport where she served as both the women's and men's head volleyball coach. She compiled a 78 and 14 record with the women's team. And in 1992, her team won the Penn State Commonwealth Athletic Conference title. She has several years of experience with junior Olympic volleyball teams and with summer volleyball camps. She has led her junior Olympic volleyball teams to the East Coast Championship for the past three years. Her overall junior Olympic coaching record, 226 and 66. She became the head coach of the Colonels in 1998, inheriting a team that was last in the OVC because of a lack of competitive funding. Her first few seasons at EKU were challenging before capturing consecutive regular season titles in 2004 and 2005. The Colonels won that conference title in 2004 and went to the NCAA National Tournament. She was named OVC Coach of the Year as the Colonels compiled the program's second highest single season winning percentage with a 27-5 record. During her tenure, tenure here at EKU, she has won 272 matches, coached six first-team All-OVC selections, two All-Regional players, and one All-American. Joined today by her family, friends, and former players and coaches, let's welcome number 21, Lori Duncan. So look out for those of you that know me I am long-winded just like a preacher so coaches and preachers can be long-winded where's Carl I'm gonna try really hard to limit it to 15 minutes okay I've talked to a couple honorees and they they're gonna give me a few minutes so I have commandeered a few extra minutes um, first and foremost thank you thank you all for being here thank you to the Hall of Fame committee to Matt Roan, the President McFadden, um, all of my colleagues that I have had the pleasure of working with throughout the course of the last 21 years. I was a coach at Eastern Kentucky University and they were 21 of the best years of my life. Um, it all started for me in 1980, um, playing in the Pennsylvania State Championship and we had this, um, we had two different uniforms because we back, back in those days, we wore the women's basketball um, jersey. So you had a home and away jersey. So I was, I was uh, 20 on one night, 21 on another night. And Jerry had, Jerry Paul Vino, the head coach at Eastern Kentucky University at the time, had recruited me. And she could not make that particular state championship. So she had someone in the stands watching and there was a mess up in the voting for all state. And I actually got the gal who wore number 21. Well, she had 21 um, on, on the bench on the first night. Um, she did not get to play in any of the matches. And then the second night I wore 21. I got her um, voted to the all state team as well as myself. And I, I think whoever was talking to Jerry got back to Jerry and said, I don't know, she, she, she didn't get to play very much. Uh, matter of fact, she didn't get to play at all the first night. <laughs> and um, so 
so it, it, I think Jerry was a little nervous, didn't know what to expect when this 17-year-old shows up on her doorstep in 1980. Um, you know, I, I have to say, and I've said this many times before, my experience at this institution was phenomenal. Um, I would have never got into coaching. I would have never done anything related to um, coaching. I was a 17-year-old who lived for volleyball. I was passionate about it. I, I, wherever the academic folks are here, I did attend class, but that was never my focus. I was here to play volleyball, and I got to be a junior, and back in those days, you had to, the NCAA started to require some academic progress, and you had to declare a major by the time you were a junior. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna be, I wanna play volleyball. And, um, I, and I give Jerry a lot of credit because I was, um, I was a fireball, and uh, I, was, I, was, I was in it to win it. I was focused on getting better every day. And as I have come through years of coaching, I realize that there are few people that live and are like that. And, and for me, the first couple of years, and I've got to apologize to all the athletes back in PA that I coached those early years, I coached from that passion from those high expectations that we live for this. And many of these, um, of these former athletes, I was at a Division II school and finally the AD said, hey, Lore, they don't live for 6 a.m. They don't, they wanna come and they've chosen a Division II school or a Division III school because that's the experience they want. And finally, I realized if I want to be as passionate and as into it as I, as I was, I gotta line up with the institution that will, that I can be that coach. And um, fortunately, Jerry was retiring and I had the opportunity to come back to my alma mater. The day I walked in on the side door of the Coliseum, I pinched myself. I said, this can't be true. This is, it doesn't get better than this. And um, even up to my last year, I still pinched myself walking into that Coliseum. It's, it was, it was a dream come true for a 17-year-old who just wanted to play volleyball. I would be remiss if I didn't think there are so many individuals sitting in this room right now that I've had so, such a great relationship, whether it was you are a former player, and I've got my former players sitting right here, not only EKU former players, but Junior Olympic former players. I've got coaching staff, Kevin and Adam, came down and, and were part of, of some of the best years at EKU. Jerry Paul Vino here. Kay Patrick, my family is um, very disappointed, not feeling well, and my mother can't travel, and they were, dis they were very disappointed they couldn't be here. But Kay Patrick, you're fitting the bill. So I do wanna, I do wanna say that I owe everything to EKU. It, as I said, was, it led me to who I've become. Um, I, uh, I wanted to thank Jerry. She just said to me while we were sitting there before I stood, and she said, you know, winning compounds winning, losing compounds losing. You know, I was like you, Laura. I always wanted to play the best. We played the best teams in the country, and she didn't get to see my speech. I swear I had it folded there. And I have in here, thank you, Dr. Jerry Paul Vino, for challenging us. When I was a player, you had high expectations, and that's a, a true athlete. That's what they want. They want to be pushed. They want to reach the pinnacle. They want to be as good as it gets. And thank you for competing and allowing us to play the best teams in the country. You know, as I think about my playing career and, of course, criticism in my coaching career that we played the best teams in the country consistently. But when I sit and think about my experience as a student athlete, I remember playing Ohio State, Penn State, Florida State. I remember beating Michigan State. I remember playing the best teams there were and winning. And yeah, we played some teams that were a lot better than us. But for me as a student athlete, and that's what the experience and who the experience is for, that was a dream come true. And I know that as the student athletes, and I should ask three of them right here, I lived for the opportunity to go into a uh, Penn State with 3,500 fans 
that are rooting against you, but that's the, that's the environment you live to be in. And yet, we may not have won, but we learned about ourselves and we learned how to get better and who we were. And for me, as a student athlete, that was really, really good. I, um, I wanna leave you with this one thing, so I am gonna wrap it up here soon. Um, I, uh, I have a lot of like notes and things that I wanted to say, but that'll be for another day, don't worry. Um, you know, I, uh, there's, a, there's a fella that coaches the USFL in Pittsburgh, and I'm from Pittsburgh, and they're the Pittsburgh Maulers, Maulers. And Ray Horton, he used to be a, an assistant with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's coaching the Maulers this year. They were really, really bad last year. So they changed their colors and their mojo, so they went from like an orangey purple, orange and purple, to a black and gold. And if you're in the Berg, that's the color you need to be. And everything changed. Kind of like going back to Nike, everything's gonna change. So anyway, so uh, he, has, he had his team, they struggled the year before, 2022, not a good year. So 2023, he's talking to them, didn't have a great start to their season, they're midway through. And he said he had, he's dressing his team, he said, hey, you know what I did? I read this article about this woman that's just fighting like four different kinds of cancers, cancers all through her body. And he was listening to this testimonial that was in the paper about this woman. And this woman said, you know what? I can't do anything about what's already happened and what's already in my body, but I can make the rest of my life the best of my life. So Ray took that and said, I, we can make the rest of our season the best of our season. So lo and behold, the Pittsburgh Maulers are in the USFL, their big final match game, their version of a Super Bowl. And that's what I wanna leave you with, is wherever you are, the best truly is to come. President McFadden just said it, the best really is truly gonna be coming. And um, wherever you are, whether it's your season, your week, your year, your life, make the rest of it the best of it. Thank you so much. I'm honored and blessed to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. The uh, volleyball team starts about, I think they just started a big match over at the Coliseum. Good luck to them today. Our next inductee played four years for EKU volleyball and four seasons for the Eastern basketball team in the 1970s. Her experience in basketball included competing in AAU basketball programs in eighth and ninth grade since there was no high school Kentucky State basketball championship for girls. Her first season of volleyball at Eastern, the Colonels finished 20 and 8, and she was the first substitute off the bench in her first year of, combat, of competitive volleyball. The team won its second consecutive Kentucky women's intercollegiate title, going undefeated in league play while winning the regional to advance to the AIAW National Tournament. In her freshman season of basketball, she started and led the team to the KWIC title, mirroring volleyball's undefeated slate against league foes. Eastern defeated Louisville, Georgetown, Murray, and advanced to the AIAW National Tournament. She led the team in scoring versus UofL with 29 and against Murray State with 18. She also led the team in scoring in Eastern's loss to South Carolina with 17 points. Her sophomore volleyball season see her gain a starting spot as Eastern produced a 26-4 record and won their third consecutive conference crown. Eastern defeated U of L, Bellarmine, Murray State, and UK on the way to the title, dominating Kentucky 15-3 and 15-5 in the championship game. EKU placed third in the AI. AW Regional Tournament and her sophomore season in basketball, she was named an Outstanding College Athlete of America for basketball, an award that she also achieved in volleyball. EKU again won the KWIC Tourney, advancing to the Regional Tournament where the Colonels went 2-2. Two two. Her junior season in volleyball where the Colonels uh, 
produced another conference crown, their third in a row, consecutive, uh, their, her second consecutive AIAW regional championship as well. They finished 30 and 11 that year. Eastern completed that season for the AIAW national tournament. That was way out in Portland, Oregon. In basketball, we just keep going back and forth here. She, I don't know how she kept up with all, but she did. She led the Colonels to a fourth straight title in the KWIC. They defeated Kentucky twice that year in the tournament. She had 25 points, 17 rebounds in the first win over UK, 23-11 and 11 in the second matchup with the Wildcats. Her senior season of volleyball and basketball was a rinse and repeat of those previous three years. KWIC titles in both sports, AIAW regional crowns in both sports as well. Following her senior year in basketball, she was named the 1975-76 Collegiate Athlete of the Year in the state by the Louisville Area Chamber of Commerce. She averaged 16.7 points and 13.4 rebounds that season. Let's meet number 50 in basketball. Number 20 in volleyball, Bernadette Bernie Koch. Thank you very much for that introduction. That was more than I knew that I did. Because um, I don't have the, any of that written down anywhere, so I, I'm grateful. And to uh, Dr. McFadden, thank you. Matt, thank you. And there's a man here that is very dear and, and beloved to my heart, and that's Carl Park. He has been a true champion of women's sports here at Eastern Kentucky University and I am extremely grateful and very proud to know him I mean he's just I don't know a true friend so I would like to thank the Eastern Kentucky University Hall of Fame committee because without your effort I would not be standing here today I would like to acknowledge the athletic talent of David Lori Lydia, David, Bruce, Kelly, and the 1971-72 basketball team. The men's basketball team, I should, I should correct myself. And, and, and I, it's an honor to be here, a privilege and a blessing for the part of the 22-2023 in induction class in the prestigious uh, Eastern Kentucky Athletic Hall of Fame. I was fortunate enough to have a father who was involved in sports and who valued sports in a crucial way and element in developing both girls and boys. His influence supported me, my passion to play basketball and volleyball. And as a result of his efforts during my junior senior year, I was on the first girls basketball team at Pleasure Ridge Park High School in Louisville. Our coach, Corrine Maskey, didn't, never played but she wanted to coach and she, never, she did not get paid for quite a few years. She coached free. She did volleyball and she, I mean, she did basketball and she did track, she did tennis, gymnastics and didn't get paid much. But she initially, she initially, she modeled us as players and to be winners on and off the court and she did. I cherished the chance to play high school ball for those two years but many uh, other athletically talented girls never had the opportunity to participate in sports. I wanted to attend Eastern Kentucky University for two reasons. The first reason was the top-notch physical education program. As a young girl, I used to go help my mother set up her classroom at Greenwood Elementary and, and just and, and put stuff together, do her bulletin boards and all that. And I knew by the time I was in the fifth grade, I wanted to be a teacher. So EKU's education, physical education program was nationally recognized. So I always, wanted, I always loved a winning program and wanted to be involved. My second reason was because I wanted to attend because my older brother Kevin played basketball. 
As a high schooler, I used to sit and cheer for him as he played for Pleasure Ridge Park. After high school graduation, he became part of the men's basketball team here at Eastern Kentucky University. Once again, EKU was a natural fit for me. My EKU volleyball career started by a happy coincidence. When I walked up, we, you know, Weaver Gym, we no longer have it, but it was a heck of a gym, and you ladies know that. Uh, the coach walked up, I walked in the door, because I was going to see, I was a freshman, I was just coming on campus, I was going to see what was going on and where my classes would be. And this lady walks up to me, and she's the coach, and she goes, you trying out for volleyball? And I said, uh, no. She goes, well, you want to? And I said, well, honey, I haven't played since elementary school, which was St. Clement Elementary on the asphalt. And so she said, well, come on and try out. So that became the start of my volleyball. And I'm extremely grateful that she said, come on. Of course, you know, I was this tall, skinny girl, you know, six foot two and a little bit lanky and whatever. So she did that for me. And I, I have to say a couple things on that. Now, as tall as I am, now, if you ever have to hit the floor going forward and try to dig a ball up and you have to be taught how to do that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's very difficult. <laughs> That's why I lived in, with ice machines and ice all the time. Uh, she kind of wore me out, you know what I mean? So as, as, I, as I started as a student athlete, the volleyball team, which is coached by Dr. Jerry Palvino, qualified, as they said, for the national tournament for consecutive years. And I'm going to tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if you could have seen us play, uh, the girls that I had, and uh, Diane Jones was our captain, and she wrote the letter for me, and uh, you all, you've, you missed out a, a tremendous four years that we had. I mean, it was everything you got, and we didn't have scholarships. We played because we wanted to play. And we won because that lady pushed us, just like Lori said, pushed us. Not demanded, but she pushed us and told us, you're going to be this good. And honey, believe me, I learned to dive. I learned to roll backwards. I learned to do a lot of things that were different. So because of her, that's what happened. And it's like I said, in 1972, we went to our first national tournament and qualified. 73, 74, and 75. So being a very proud member of the 1973 team, as was mentioned, was the winningest volleyball team in Eastern's history with a 26 and four record. During my four years, the volleyball team was defeated only once in the state team. I won't mention it, but I think it was Moorhead. <laughs> and you all know what happens when you play Moorhead. We were successful because we had great coaches and outstanding athletes who all shared a lifetime bond. And it was my privilege to play with these ladies. In addition to volleyball, I knew I wanted to play basketball and that's why I came because, you know, I played that all my life. And so I became dedicated, a dedicated two sport athlete. I went to volleyball practice for two hours and I went to basketball practice for two hours. And that, that overlapped, the seasons overlapped. And then in between I would do my homework and sleep. But nice too. So I truly loved, I, and, I, and I can say this now, I truly, truly loved playing with all my heart and all my soul here at Eastern, at Pleasure Ridge Park. And I, I mean, I, I, I could just, I could yell and scream. And I, could, some, I told somebody I could cheer right now that, you know, I was able to do that. I, I had that opportunity. And I wish my four coaches that I had for basketball were here, but they're not. Uh, but that's okay. So, you know, when I put on that uniform, and you see the kids today, you know, kind of walk around or whatever, you didn't have to tell me to do anything. We didn't have practice uniforms. We just had uniforms for travel. And I'm going to say this, we traveled in station wagons. <laughs> now, if you remember those maroon station wagons, you saw riding around on campus. Well, guess where I sat? I sat in the back where the luggage was because I had leg room. And the, the girls, the rest of the girls and the coach, of course, the coach drove, and I'm not going to go by the coach's story on her driving, but, you know, hey. 
she likes to go in circles at times. So in, in basketball, I was coached first by a graduate student, Paula Welsh, 12 and seven. The second year was Ellen Jones and Paula Welsh, 13 and three. Finished, the season, finished that season, and then Terry Hall, who was at Butler High School at the time, came and coached my junior year. The biggest thrill of my junior year with our team, we went down to Knoxville, and you all know where that is, the University of Tennessee, and guess what we did to Pat Summit? We beat her. Eastern Kentucky University beat the University of Tennessee Pat Summit's team. And back then, you always got together afterwards and had like a little gathering and, you know, whatever, and met and talked after the game. Well, we didn't get to meet them. You know where they went? They went back into the gym and they practiced <laughs> because she was very upset. A school like Eastern is going to beat you? Well, we did. And, and that's a proud moment. I, I always, you know, and she was one of the best coaches in the world. Don't get me wrong. She was. And it's a shame that she's gone and had to end, but, you know, that's, that's part of our lives that we have to deal with. Then my final season was my senior year in 1975-76, and that's when Title IX started. And you gentlemen know about Title IX. I know you do. That's when scholarships came out. But prior to not Title IX, our teammates and I played for the love of the game. We really did. And our records show and our dedication show what we did for Eastern Kentucky University. Four years at Eastern gave me the opportunity to develop athletically and professionally, and both have served me well. Eastern provided me an amazing athletic and educational role models whom I have served to emulate. As my time at Eastern ended, those same role models led me to coaching. My hope is that I have made a difference I've got some young ladies over here that I coach and that they were in high school. Made a difference in their young women's lives that I coached over the years, the same way my coaches and teammates at Eastern made a difference for me. Before I close, I would like to recognize people who have shared in my life, but not in my sport. First is my oldest brother, George, Jr. I would like to say thank you for being who you are and for always having my back. Second, person I would like to call on is my, uh, someone I called my better half. And my family only knows who that is. I had a twin sister and she was mentally handicapped, but she has since gone to heaven. But that is my better half, and she has always been carried with me and always will be till the day I meet her in heaven. And, sec and the third thing I would like to say is another sister here, uh, Janice, and her husband, Richard, could not make it here today. Uh, she was, got sick this morning about 6, and we had to rush her to the hospital in Lexington. She's doing okay, and I I'm sorry that she's not here to see this and to witness this. So I love all my family, I love my friends. They are my family, the people that are here. So in so many important ways, sports can be our classroom. They can provide an uh, important venue for all of us to understand and connect with one another. So cherish the people you have and cheer them on to find ways to nurture those who need your support. Thank you for all making today a very memorable experience for me at Eastern Kentucky University. God bless you all and go Colonels. Yes, please. Thank you.
fitting, uh, Bernie, that we recognize a two-sport star here today after honoring uh, Roy Kidd, a two-sport star baseball and football at Eastern Kentucky with his uh, funeral here earlier this week. Our next inductee completed three seasons for Coach Rick Urban's EKU track and cross-country programs. She began her career by winning the 1,500-meter run at the OVC Outdoor Championship. Her career took off her sophomore year. She won the 2011 OVC cross-country title, was named Runner of the Year and Athlete of the Championship Meet. During that 2011 cross-country season, she was a three-time winner of the OVC Cross Country Athlete of the Week and closed by finishing 37th at the NCAA National Cross Country Meet. During her cross career, she was a part of three OVC titles. In both 2011 and 2012, she was named OVC Indoor Athlete of the Year, winning the mile run both years in addition to taking the 800-meter 800, 800 run and the 3,000-meter run in 2012. She was named the champion of the meet MVP at the conference indoor meet in 2012. Her outdoor highlights included winning the 1,500-meter run in both 2010 and 2011. Joined today by family, friends, and her coach, Rick Erdman, let's welcome Lydia Koskai. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I must say, um, getting selected into the Hall of Fame never crossed my mind. When I received that phone call that day, I had to call somebody to make sure that was correct. <laughs> I know it, it, it never crossed my mind. So I'm blessed to be here today and I'm honored. I've been joined with my family all the way from Africa. My mom, uh, <laughs> Leah and John, and my brother Amos, who is also a former EKU, my friend, best friend, whom we ran together at EKU, David Mutuse, and my husband, Festus, who ran for Middle Tennessee University. So I'm honored and happy to be here today. This was a great opportunity that it's one in a, in a lifetime. When I told everyone, friends of mine, everybody was congratulating me, and I'm happy to be here today. I must say, um, when I came to EKU in 2009, I wasn't the best. In fact, I think my scholarship was threatened at some point. And then um, one day I had the best workout, and Coach Rick Edmund, who is here uh, with us today, came to me and told me, I think you can be the best athlete I've ever coached. That stuck with me, and I didn't, I didn't want to disappoint him. So I started to ra run hard. The Uchip Trail, can tell you if it was a person to, to speak. So I started putting in a lot of miles because I didn't want to disappoint him. It was uh, this coach who would always come to you and talk to you about mental toughness. So he taught me how to be mentally tough and I've been who I am today because of him. And um, I'm happy that you are here today, Coach Rick Edman. I'm happy to share this with you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for being here and I'm happy to be honored. Thank you. Our next inductee played four seasons of golf at EKU in the mid-1980s. The Colonels, he led the, the Colonels to three straight Ohio Valley Conference team titles from 1984 through 1986. He was chosen OVC Golfer of the Year in 1985 and 1986 as medalist in both tournaments. He was also runner-up in 1987 when, and was a three-year selection to the all-tournament team. After graduation, he continued to play golf at a high level, winning the state amateur, the state two-man amateur, the 1995 and 1997 Pro President, and the 2009 Kentucky Pro Match Play event. He is the only player to win three consecutive Northern Kentucky men's am amateur championships. 
He won Kentucky PGA Player of the Year honors for the past five years, including 2018, 2021, and 22. In 2022, he won eight tournaments, the Kentucky Senior Open, the Kentucky Senior Match Play event, the Kentucky Golf House Classic No. 2, the 2x2 Pro-Am, the Titleist and FootJoy Team Championships, and the Kentucky Senior PGA Championship. During his golf career, beginning at the age of 15, he has won more than 140 tournaments, has set three course records, and has recorded 19 holes in one while serving as pro at the Pendleton Hills Country Club. Joined today by his family and friends, let's welcome Bruce Oldendick. I just, I just realized my shoes are very loud. <laughs> well, those of you that know me know that I do not look for the spotlight. I am not that outgoing. I'm a little bit shy, but um, we'll give this a shot. I've had a pretty good life. I've got four great parents. Uh, they all play golf, and they're all pretty good. I have a great sister who's also very good. Uh, at golf. Uh, she did play for the other school on the other side of the state. And we won't hold that against you, Lori. <laughs> uh, let's see, we, uh, I've got, um, my kids are here too, all of them, all four of them, which is amazing to get all four of my kids together at one time because they're very busy. Uh, they play golf, uh, maybe not so well, but they they enjoy it sometimes, and now they're actually asking me to play golf. So that was hard for me to get them out on the golf course when they were younger. See, I guess you could say that golf is in my blood. Uh, Dad got me started when I was four years old. And when I got to hit a good, a good shot, he would let me ride in a golf cart. <laughs> Maybe now he'll let me ride in the golf cart. <laughs> I've got some great friends. I've got one here today, Bob Rich. <laughs> He's dear to me. He's, I mean, we've been through so much. I just wish you would quit telling all those stories about us. My kids don't need to know all those. <laughs> I'm proud of my kids. I've got, my son is a deputy sheriff. I've got one that's an accountant, one that is studying to be a physician assistant, and my youngest is playing basketball at Mount St. Joe up in Cincinnati. Did I mention that three of them are triplets? They're 25 years old. There's my hairline, guys. <laughs> Sometimes they can be a little bit stubborn, and I really do not know where they get that. <laughs> my golf coach, Lou Smither, um, he passed away about a couple years ago, and he was he was tough on us. He uh, he uh, he pushed us pretty hard, and um, he introduced um, working out, which was unheard of in the golf business back in the early mid '80s. So we did work out to the best that we could, not knowing what we were doing, but. Um, he was pretty progressive. He was tough, but he was fair. Um, his wife, Arlene, she passed away a couple years ago also. Uh, she, we, we used to call her mom. She was very involved with the golf team. So we were always, all of us would get together and mom would always be there. We were a pretty close unit back at that time. My years at Eastern were some of the best times of my life. Not only was I a member of the golf team, but I was a member of the Tall Kappa Epsilon fraternity. It kept me busy, and I was juggling my time, but I, I tried to keep up with all of my responsibilities, and it taught me well. It was well worth it. I would like to thank um, EKU President David T. McFadden, Vice President and Director of Athletics Matt Roan, 
uh, Carl Park of the Eastern Kentucky University Athletics Hall of Fame and the Selection Committee. This is a great honor, one that I am very proud of. And thank you to all my family and friends for coming today, and thank you all. Congratulations. I was impressed by those 19 holes in one. Uh, after the football team lost at Cincinnati, our broadcast crew was coming back. We stopped for a quick bite to eat, and I said, let's play some golf. Try to, And, you know, the four of us, I, I wanted to be the winner, and I did win that round. I had five holes in one. Shot a 33 on the putt-putt up in Bruce's area of the of the true 33. I had five holes in one. Never had one on a real golf course, so that that's amazing. Our, inductee, our next inductee played four seasons for Coach Jane Worthington's softball team. Her best season at Eastern, 1998, when she hit 416, 17 doubles, had 12 home runs, 46 RBI. That season, she was ranked 20th in the nation in home runs and was the OVC Player of the Year. Her career totals at EKU, 197 hits, 18 home runs, 99 RBI, a 321 batting average. Following graduation from Eastern, she remained in athletics coaching softball. She started the softball program at Frank Phillips College in Texas and stayed there for two years before being named head softball coach in 2004 at San Jacinto College, where she continues to coach. Her teams have compiled more than 600 victories. She was inducted into the Manitoba Hall of Fame in 2014 and the Canadian Softball Hall of Fame in 2015. She has led San Jacinto to five JC National tournaments, including third in 2021. She has coached 81 all-conference players, 72 all-region players, 13 NFCA All-Americans, and three junior college All-Americans, as well as Players of the Year, Pitchers of the Year, etc. She has also coached numerous players who were named regional and national all-academic teams. In 2012, she was named Athletic Director for the SJC South Campus, where she has been able to improve the soccer and softball programs, along with increasing scholarships across all sports. She has also volunteered in her community with many projects and camps for kids and youth, including aiding in the Hurricane Laura relief donations for Louisiana three years ago. Joined today by her family and friends and fellow teammates, let's welcome number 17, Kelly Swanson Signs. Good afternoon. Thank you. What a great honor this is. Um, never would have thought it would have happened, especially, you know, small farm girl from middle of nowhere in Canada comes down here and, and does great things. And coming back after 25 years, I think what makes me the most proud is seeing how this place has changed over the years. How it's grown to me, it's grown 50%. I remember having to walk from one dorm all the way to the softball field, felt like six miles. Now it seems, wow, it's just gotten so much bigger and better in the athletic program. Under you has done very well. The college itself under Dr. McFadden has done amazing things. So that is, it's just beautiful to see how academics and athletics can impact someone's life. And it did impact mine. Back in the day, it used to be I'm told all my friends, you know, we're a little class of nine because the middle of nowhere. Here's my signature. I'm going, to, I'm going to play college ball in the States. You watch. And luckily, Coach Worthington somehow found me, and here I am. Greatly appreciated, honored, blessed. And everything that I learned here in the academic areas, in the athletic areas, has made me... Um, the person I am today has set a great foundation for what I do with my student athletes now. Um, being here has learned that, you know, if you surround yourself with good people, you'll, you'll be better and hopefully they're smarter and 
than you, and that's kind of what I've done, which has allowed me to be successful. I've also learned from Coach Worthing and B Worthington and being here at the university, if you're a better person, a better student, and a better athlete when you leave, you've done everything possible. And for that, Coach Wor Worthington, thank you, because you made me a better person, a better student, much better student, and an even better athlete. So we, I, it was greatly appreciated. Um, I want to thank my husband who's been here, uh, my sister who surprised me, and then I've got a couple, my cousins as well. My parents who were so excited to come, unfortunately couldn't make it, so they will see the video, so that it, that'll be great. But you know, you look back and I remember playing here four years ago and thinking, you know what, it's not bad. Now I look back after hearing the award and getting the, getting the call from Carl and I think, man, those are the best years of my life. Now I get it, now I understand it. And when my athletes get mad at me and say, I don't get it, I said, give yourself five years, you'll completely understand it. Well, it took me a little longer. I guess I'm a little slower, but Coach Worthington, I completely understand everything you did to us, and I apologize for the gray hair I may have caused you, our group. But I'll tell you what, best years of my life without hands down, and I'm just so proud to be back at such a stage like this. It's a very much an honor. It's a privilege and truly blessed to be recognized by such a great university for the academics and for the athletics. Um, but again, thank you, very honored. I appreciate everything everybody's done to have this event, because this is not easy to do on the administrative side, so great job on that. So thank you very much. Our next inductee played four seasons at defensive end for Coach Roy Kidd's EKU Curtles. He came to Eastern out of Aiken High School in Cincinnati, where he gained all-city, all-conference, and all-state honors in football, and also served as captain for the Aiken High School basketball team. After being redshirted as a freshman in 1987, he was voted co-MVP for the Curtles on the defensive side his sophomore year. Made 79 tackles that year. His junior and senior year, he was an honorable mention All-American choice and first-team All-OVC pick. As a junior, while serving as one of the team captains, he collected 16 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, 87 total tackles. His senior year, 1991, he had 82 tackles, 17 for loss, and 12 sacks as the Colonels made the semifinals of the 1AA playoffs. He was signed by the San Francisco 49ers as a free agent in 1992 and was part of a team that lost to the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC Championship game. After being released by the 49ers in 1993, he was in the Falcons and Cardinals camps in 94, then went to Europe and was on the World Championship team in 1995 with the Frankfurt Germany team. He was part of the Indianapolis Colts camp in 1995 and 1996 before being released. In 1996, he suffered two injuries that curtailed his career, hypertension in his left knee and a torn tricep. He is currently the vice president of the Cincinnati chapter of the NFL Players Association. He is a real estate investor and helps people with life insurance annuities, wills, and trust estate planning. Ladies and gentlemen, joined today by family, friends, former teammates and coaches, let's welcome number 89, David Wilkins. I had to put these up. Everybody else was short except for the six two Leon lady and six foot other lady. Thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to to be in this moment. It's, it was a pleasure, and a, I was I'm grateful that I got the call about four months ago from uh, Carl Park. Carl's been here since uh, I think EKU was in, put together the first brick that was laid here. Carl was probably here, but we talk often. And Carl called me and said that. Uh, well, when he called, I'm like, hey, Carl, how you doing? He was like, uh, I said, uh, how's Coach doing? Because he usually called me and tell me how Coach Kidd's doing. He said, well, this ain't about Coach Kidd. I said, what's up? He said, well, we're going, you've been inducted to the Hall of Fame. And I said, what? Okay, well, thank you. You know, I guess you don't know what to say at the time, but I was kind of excited and uh, happy that he did that. So I'm grateful to be here. First, I want to thank God for allowing me 
to be here. Uh, when I say here, I mean be here in this situation and still definitely on this earth. I also want to thank my family that is present here. Uh, my lovely lady, uh, Aisha Moore, uh, her father and mother, Dr. George T. Moore, Miss Peggy Moore, uh, my sister, uh, Vicky. <laughs> Told me not to cry, but I can't help it. <laughs> uh, she's probably why I'm here because, um, big as I am, and uh, the way I play, she would always tell me, "You ain't shit." <laughs> <laughs> but that's what made me the way I am. Um, she was a bigger sister, older sister, and I love her, but she made me who I am today. Um, <laughs> uh. Our daughters here, Desiree Allen, um, my sister Diane uh, Wilkins, and then my niece Jade. Uh, also, I want to thank former NFL players that came down, and good friends of mine. Also went to Aiken, played with the Green Bay Packers, Mr. Ralph Williams, uh, another former uh, NFL player, played at uh, Walnut Hills High School in Cincinnati, uh, played at Toledo. Uh, Darren Anderson came out to see me, and then uh, another mother of mine, uh, Miss Rakaya Mutakaleen. We were partner in the uh, association called the Musketeer Association that helps um, trauma that's going on in America. So I want to thank all you all for being here and also my oldest brother <laughs> sitting here with the, the Maroon Kango, Daryl Killing uh, Tory. Did I say that right? Or do I? Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> my oldest brother is here as well. So I want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, my story started um, when I started playing football when I was 10 years old. My father had left and then my coaches ended up, you know, playing a role as my father. Um, football wasn't even my favorite sport. I love basketball. I would leave the house and play basketball all day. My mother never had to worry about us getting in trouble. She knew I was on the court somewhere just playing basketball. And then um, just made me a dual sport athlete. I only started playing football. I had a tragic accident when I was uh, 17, and after that, I just was angry, and I started playing football just so I could get out my anger. And, um, but basketball, I was scoring 18 points, 10 rebounds a game, so I thought I was gonna be in the NBA somewhere. Uh, but football just kept calling me um, because of uh, what happened to, my, happened to me. And then, football, I had a couple of schools looking at me, but, I didn't, I didn't know where I wanted to go. Kentucky, uh, this, the one up the street, they wanted me, UK. Uh, but they were on uh, probation at the time, and they was getting, they had to be in at 11 o'clock. Not that I wanted to stay out late, but it was just like they were on curfew. I, it didn't seem right to go to a school that I had a curfew, so I just didn't want to go there. Um, but Eastern came. Um, Eastern Kentucky came, and I played. When we're aching, we, were all, we, we would always be good. We were eight and three, but they would never let us in the playoffs. And I always wanted to get a ring. Well, when Coach Kidd came into my home, Coach Taylor, Coach Tanera, they all had on these rings. And that's all I really seen. So they really didn't have to sell me on anything else because I wanted to get a ring. I said, okay, I'm coming to Eastern. So after that, uh, it was, it was a no-brainer no once I saw the rings. Um, and I knew uh, I had to get a scholarship too because my mother uh, didn't have the money for me to go to college, and I saw so I had to work my butt off to make sure I kept my grades up so I could get a scholarship. And Eastern was just a, a great place because I knew I could come down here and get me a ring. But I didn't understand that just, you, you can see the rings, but you have to put the work in to get the rings. And that's the only reason that they had, had so many rings at the time. I, I had never even heard of Eastern Kentucky until they offered me a scholarship. Like I said, I remember coaching them coming to the, to the house. Um, I get to EKU and I didn't know basically what to expect. But I did learn quick once I got on campus that Eastern had a tradition of winning. Um, and you were expected to fall in line and keep up with the tradition. And then when I look back, I had some of the best coaches in the country uh, teaching me the game of football and the game of life. Coach Jim Tanera, uh, he was from Alabama and uh, probably the reason I got a scholarship to Eastern because Coach T would say, you know, Dave, when I watched him of you, you were always around the ball. And that's what made me say, we got to get this kid and bring him in here. And uh, 
you know, most guys don't want to go to practice. We would get, I would get to practice early and go out there because Coach Tenera had stories from Alabama. And these stories were like, would keep you in awe. It was like a listen to a sermon on Sunday. But we would always be laughing, but it was just stories that he had. And also, <laughs> he taught me a lot about just being a man. He trusted me when um, I became a junior or senior. Coach would ask me when I got off the sideline, hey, Coach, I mean, Wilkins, what's going on out there? So that taught me a lot that he trusted me enough to give me that respect. And then we would get together and say, Coach, this is what I see. From there, Coach would say, all right, we make adjustments and we're going to do this. But he, he trusted me and loved me enough to, to, to let me be a captain and understand that he was helping me grow in more than just football. Uh, probably something you shouldn't have did, but when I was uh, on Fridays, by the time I was a senior on Fridays, I didn't really do too much tobacco, but he always would dip. Then I was like, Coach, let me get some of that dip. And I dip, I'd be high as a kite out there playing football because <laughs> I didn't know what tobacco would do to you. But I, it was just Friday, so I would be, I was good for the game on Saturday. That's just something nobody else knew, but I'm letting you guys know that now. <laughs> but Coach Taylor was, was a great, uh, is a great human being, a great man, and he taught me a lot. Coach Teddy, Teddy Taylor, everybody probably knows that name around Eastern Kentucky. Coach Taylor, um, one of the greatest human beings I've ever met. Um, and also a bad-ass nose tackle. You wouldn't even believe it, as short, he is, as short as he is, but he was just a great player, but even a better human being. And... Um, he was just a guiding source to navigate me as a young man in, in the college arena. And then we had Coach Jack Eisen. Uh, Coach, I, th I thought he was one of the meanest SOBs when we got here. The man never smiled, just was just mean all the time. But he had a brilliant mind and he would put us in the best situations to go out there and execute and be the great players that we were. Uh, Coach Eisen was in charge of getting us in shape and man, boy, did he get us in shape. All, the, all these big athletic dorms and places that you see that get people together here, even the one that they have here, we didn't have that. Like some of the other people that got inducted, we didn't have all the stuff that they have here. We helped build it, and I'm glad it's here, but we had a little hot box that we would work out in. And Coach uh, Eisen would, that's how we ended up being as great as we were because he put us in that hot box and we worked our butts off to be uh, great human beings and champions. Um, uh, by the time I was a senior, no, I probably was a junior. That's probably the first time I seen Coach T uh, Ison smile. So I've been here three years before I seen this man smile. But uh, that's when we start, you know, putting together the, the the winning championships of when I was here. I had great players. The only reason I became great is because the players that I had before me that taught me how to be great. And then. Uh, Last, but of course not least, Coach Kidd. He just passed away a couple weeks ago, but uh, may he rest in peace. You probably wouldn't believe that we didn't get along when I first got here. <laughs> but uh, I'm just a young kid. I'm thinking everything should be around me, evolve around me. And Coach Kidd, I, I didn't know that he had 300 other kids to deal with. I'm thinking it's all about me. But by the time I was a junior, senior, me and Coach Kidd had a great relationship. I trusted him and I loved him. and. He will be missed. And I still love him to the day I die because he was just a great, great human being. And then I'll never forget some of the things that happened to me. Um, <laughs> we were playing that, that team that we don't talk about uh, on the other side of the state. I'll say the name, Western Kentucky. And I'm running down and I'm on kickoff. And I'm running down and usually you'll see people coming at you. With my guy, he didn't come at me. He went that way. So I'm thinking ain't nobody going to block me. Next thing I know, phew, I'm on the sideline because <laughs> the guy over here came and hit me. I didn't see that. So I'll, he hit me and knocked me off the uh, field, and I landed right at Coach Kidd's feet. He said, son, you got to keep your head on a swivel, son. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, that's just one of the funny stories uh, about Coach Kidd. Uh, that I'll never forget. Um, <laughs> all I could do is laugh. Well, all the coaches that we had here were some of the best coaches in the country. I uh, only have two minutes or, or less, so I won't talk about the rest of them, but they were all good, and that's, that's what we were good. Uh, I didn't even think I was going to the NFL because Eastern Kentucky was a 1AA school, 
and I never heard of them, never thought that we would have a chance. You know, we weren't on TV like you would see everybody else, the Ohio States, Notre Dames and stuff like that. But every day that I was here, from the time I stepped on campus, there was a scout at practice. I know who they were, I knew why they were there. But they were there because we had great players. The first year I was here, Aaron Jones got uh, drafted to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the first round. So every year, the next year, somebody was going. Danny uh, Copeland, Myron Guyton, uh, Jesse Small. Jesse Small was a defensive end in front of me. He was the one that got me to the NFL because I just watched him be great, and he, he helped me to be great. My senior year, I was captain. And then I knew I had an opportunity to make it to the NFL, and I ended up being a free agent with the San Francisco 49ers, like I said, and also uh, – and I ended with the Colts, but I played, I was in camp with the Falcons, Arizona Cardinals, and I played overseas in the World League with the Frankfurt Galaxy. And then I ended with the Colts, hypersent of my left knee and tore my tricep. One play, I was 26 and that was it. Um, but and after that, I came back to Eastern Kentucky to finish my degree. I had like one semester to go. So as soon as I got hurt, I called my counselor, came back here, coached that year, and also finished my degree. You'd be surprised I got A's and B's when I got back <laughs> to get my degree. Uh, my life now, I'm licensed to sell life insurance and I have several other businesses, but Eastern was my foundation and the foundation that taught me to preserve, uh, persevere through whatever obstacle life throws at you. Uh, I'm grateful to be inducted to the Eastern Kentucky Hall of Fame. I understand that the gentleman before me built a tradition and a foundation of winning so to be in the Eastern Hall of Fame would be one of the top achievements of my life. Uh, as I leave the stage uh, and we go back to our lives, I'll leave you with this. You have everything you need to be great. God has placed his favor on you. There's nothing you cannot do. There are going to be obstacles in your way, but keep going, keep pushing forward. I believe in you, now you believe in you. Thank you to the nomination committee for uh, nominating me to the Hall of Fame. This means the world to me. Thank you. Much love, man. Have a blessed day. Our last set of inductees formed a special team that many Colonel fans remember as one of this university's most exciting. It was coached by Hall of Fame coach Guy Strong. It was a homegrown team as well, with four of the five starters from Kentucky, including EKU Hall of Fame selections George Bryant from Burnside and Charlie Mitchell, who played at Louisville Seneca. The heart and soul of the team, point guard Billy Burton from Louisville's Pleasure Ridge Park, who played the game with a passion. And a dependable power forward as well in Daryl Dunnigan from Mill Spring down around Somerset. The other starter was 6'11 center Dan Argebright, came to Eastern from Indiana. The team had an impressive in-season tournament championship when it went to Oklahoma City and won the all-college classic with wins over Texas Tech, Santa Clara, and Oklahoma City. In one of its most outstanding games of the season, in the regular season finale in Alumni Coliseum, before a standing room only crowd of 8,400. Good job, Carl. He, Carl's good on those stats sometimes about attendance. Eastern destroyed Moorhead State, 121 to 91. George Bryant led the way with 39 points, followed closely by Charlie Mitchell with 36. Can you imagine if we had three point shooting back then? After gaining a share of the OVC's regular season title, the Colonels defeated Moorhead State 98-86 at the Frankfurt Sports Center for the right to represent EKU in the NCAA tournament. Boy, did they do a good job in that tournament. As it turned out, the Colonels faced one of the best teams in the tournament, Florida State, who ended up being the national runner-up. The final score in that opening round, Seminoles 83, EKU 81. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome EKU's team of distinction, the 1971-72 men's basketball team. Coach Guy Strong is here to accept the Hall of Fame plaque, and we're going to ask the rest of the team to line up. And while we're doing that, I'm going to give you some statistics as we get everybody in place here.
While Carl gets uh, everybody in place and Guy accepts the plaque on behalf of this team of distinction, here are some of the records of EKU's eight NCAA tournament teams. Charlie Mitchell scored more points than any other colonel in any NCAA tournament game, 23 points. Daryl Dunnigan, 14 points, and the top rebounder with 15. Dan Argebride had 14 points. George Bryant had 11. This team before you in two seasons played in three final played three final four teams. The 1970-71 Kansas and Western Kentucky teams, the 1972 team that we mentioned, Florida State a runner up. They played Florida State twice, which was 10th in the nation. Southwestern Louisiana that had Bo Lamar and that score was 105-99. George Bryant Eighth in the nation in that shootout. Oral Roberts, sixteenth in the nation. They were twenty-six and two that year, and they played. Are we ready to introduce? Okay. George Bryant is going to accept the award for to make the speech, and also accept the award after you're done from from Matt. Then. Okay. I think go ahead there first. Yeah. Right. Well, I hadn't prepared for this, but uh, uh, Carl. Uh, Matt, uh, Dr. McFadden, thank you so much for where EKU Athletics is today, but thank you so much for sharing your passion and your vision for where it's going to go in the next years ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, we're honored. We've talked about this. Uh, we've waited a long time. We're honored. But I just want to say this. Uh, Charlie Mitchell. Raise your hand, Charlie. Step out here. I'm not just saying this. Any one of you that were around in those days, uh, this is the greatest small forward to ever play at EKU. Am I right? Okay. It was a privilege to play with him. Billy Burton, where's Billy? Step out. Hey. Everyone remembers this guy, the most tenacious and the greatest defensive guard to ever play in Ohio Valley Conference, right? <laughs> Dan Algebraith. Yeah, right this was our first seven-footer to ever play at EKU, and in those days could play with his back to the basket or he could play facing the basket and was doing things then that the pros just started doing a few years back. And, and, and he was one of the greatest centers to play in the old VC period. And then, and, and I'm, I'm not just saying this, Daryl Dunnigan at 6'5 uh, was the most tenacious rebounder that, uh, that I've ever played with. And I've played with some good ones. And then as far as a teammate, there's never been anyone that, that could ever say they had a better teammate than the three guys that I just mentioned and myself would say about Daryl. And you take that, and then you've got a Hall of Fame coach. How could you not get inducted one day into the Hall of Fame? Thank you. George, what was your range? Like, seriously, 30 in or what? The Lexington? <laughs> Burnside? <laughs> yeah, he could shoot from Burnside. Let me introduce everybody. Raise your hand. I've got your numbers. That's where Carl Park comes in. He's got uh, steel trap memory. Number 50, Dan Argebright. Number 4, Robert Brooks. Number 34, Charlie Brunker. Number 44 is George Bryant. 52, Billy Burton. Daryl Dunnigan, number 14. Charles Mitchell, number 30. Rick Stansel, 42. Craig Turner, 32. Wade Upchurch, war 10. And Chuck Worthington, war number 32. You've met head coach Guy Strong, assistant Tommy Harper, Jack, the late Jack Hissom. The trainer is here today, and Ken Murray. 
managers Mark Hudson and Michael Myers. Ladies and gentlemen, your 1971-72 men's basketball team, a team of distinction. If I can, ask the team to kind of just stay over there for a, t a group picture. Also, after we're done here, the other inductees, the individual inductees to come forward for pictures, and then everybody will, uh, will be done. But we're going to end this after the handshake line by bringing our Vice President and Athletics Director, Matt Roan, up for some closing words. Uh, again, football starts at 6 o'clock tonight. Go Big E. And we really appreciate everybody being here. And congratulations to the newest members of the Athletics Hall of Fame. So as I was making my greetings uh, before I kind of finish my remarks, I, I asked Coach Strong for some advice that he might give me. What can I say to, to end this event the way that it should and appropriately? And he said, hey, a good speech has a great beginning, has a great ending, and it doesn't have very much in between. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to do you proud, Coach. But in closing, I want to once again congratulate our newest EKU Athletics Hall of Fame inductees, uh, seven outstanding individuals, uh, one amazing team, uh, certainly led by a Hall of Famer uh, and many, many amazing uh, men. The Hall of Fame process is always a special deal for me. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge all of the effort, as you've heard many, many people say today, that Carl Park puts into the selection process and the diligent work of the selection committee that he surrounds himself with. Thank you, KP. It's always a highlight when Carl and I get to make the calls to the successful nominees as you hear the raw emotion on the other end of the phone and the pride that each one of you and so many of you before uh, has in this place, uh, such a special place. As the leader of our current student athletes, and some of which are here uh, today and appreciate Coach Hamilton bringing them, our 12 head coaches, our assistant coaches, and all of our staff, that is precisely what we are after today and every day moving forward, namely to make you proud, more proud tomorrow than you are today to be associated with EKU. The sacrifices, the commitment, and the effort each of you has offered to ultimately make you Hall of Famers and to make EKU Athletics what it is will never be an effort that was made in vain. Instead, our job is to continue building upon the foundation of success each of you has helped provide, and thank you for making us what we are, and I hope that you'll continue with your support, your generosity, and even more, your advocacy for the rest of your life. We are proud of you, and we want you to always be proud to be a colonel. Before I can conclude, Greg, can I ask you to stand up just for a second? It's only fitting that I recognize another Hall of Famer in our presence, uh, who acted as our MC and as our master ceremonies today. The voice of the colonels himself, Greg Stottlemyre. Greg is going to be inducted, if you haven't heard already, into the Kentucky Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame this Monday evening in Northern Kentucky. Greg has been associated with EKU Athletics broadcast for 44 years and has prepared and poured himself into every single broadcast since. Please join me in a special round of applause for Greg Stottlemyre. I'd like to thank the Center for the Arts staff. I'd like to thank Robbie, EKU Dining, uh, conferencing and events, everybody who make, helped make today what it is. Uh, certainly special uh, being on this stage and being in the presence of greatness. Uh, finally, I'd like to ask that all inductees meet in front of the stage here in just a moment for one final group picture. And Carl has asked me to remind everyone to please plan to gather behind the south end zone, which is the video board end of the football stadium, 
with five minutes to go in the second quarter in anticipation of your halftime recognition. Every day is a great day to be a Colonel, but being with you all here on this special day is that much more special. Thank you for being here, and once again, congratulations to the class of 2023 of the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. Go Big E.